and Buzz City, we are right back at it again. We are taking on the Lakers tonight after a tough loss against the Knicks. I'm Aaron Pitsenberger for Hornets.com. That's Matt Ruchinski, and this is the HornetsFanshop.com pregame show. All right, Matt, we have a game day special. Yep. What do you got for us? Always got a game day special <laughs> here on the HornetsFanshop.com pregame show. Today, same thing as yesterday, 20% off sweatshirts and jackets. It's cold outside, a little rainy, so you might need a raincoat instead of just a winter coat. Make sure you pick up whatever you can, get it shipped out here, get 20% off. Well, really briefly, as much as I don't want to talk yeah. about it, we got to recap last night's game. It was a heartbreaking loss, 126-124 to 124 against the Knicks. It almost seems like the script was flipped almost from Wednesday's game. We came back from a double-digit double, double mm -hmm. digit deficit yep. and came back, beat them, uh, beat the, the Pistons, I'm yep. sorry. And then last night, they came back from a double-digit deficit and yeah. then beat us at the very end. What it, were your thoughts? It was, it was tough, man. It was very tough. You know, I wrote in my story that basketball can be a fickle friend. And, yes. and it really can from game to game. You never know what's going to happen in the NBA. Any team can beat any team on a given night. It's just a matter of who kind of gets hot at the right moment. Last night, fourth quarter, you enter in up 15 points and you think you're in a really good shape. And you think you're going to take this victory, start the homestand with two wins. And you know what? There's a team on the other side of the court that wasn't ready to throw in the towel. They were going to continue to fight, and fight they did and come back to beat the Hornets in overtime. Now, if there's anything good to take away from last night's game, the entire starting lineup finished in double figures. Mm -hmm. Cody had a double-double for the night, and Frank finished with double figures as well. What did you like from that starting lineup? I loved the start. I loved, we talked about it in the pregame show yesterday, that we needed to get off to a fast start against the Knicks. When you're playing a team that you're expected to beat, it's really important to really kind of put the hammer down early. Make them know that they're here in your building, you're here to win the game. We did that. We got up by 21 points in the first half. Seemed to be rolling really nice. Like you said, Cody's game, probably one of the his best as a Hornet. First 2010 game, killing it out there. It was nice to see. But they continue to come back and switch to that zone defense. Zone defense. Uh, and, and the guys just couldn't adjust. So what was so, now that we're talking about defense, break this down a little bit for us. The first three quarters, we're a man-to-man. -man. Yep. What was it that made them switch to zone defense in the fourth? Teams go to a zone in the NBA when basically they're having a hard time stopping you. They're realizing from a one-on-one -on -one basis, we can't get the job done. We're having a hard time controlling Cody Zeller. We're having a hard time keeping up with Nick Batum. So they want to kind of try and slow the game down, make you work to get shots and they just run that zone, but it's tough in the NBA to not get a three-second call, so you don't see it run very often. But the way to beat a zone is there's really two ways to beat it. Either you hit three-pointers, or you attack it and go to the rim and force guys to converge on you and you have to find the open man. The problem was we didn't hit any three-pointers in the fourth quarter. Right. We were three of 14 from long range in the fourth quarter. That's not gonna beat the zone. And we couldn't find a way to get in and attack and find some space in the lane. Well, hopefully we can pull out this win tonight, kind of brush off what we kind of yeah, dealt with off. last night. Everybody we'll shake, shake it, off. it off. We're good. We're, we'll get this We're ready tonight. to go. Let's do this. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, we'll be right back with our content writer, Sam Purley, right after this. You know, he played with the most heart, you know, and at five foot three, the way that he could do things and, and how fast he was. He was a spark plug. I mean, I... <laughs> Man, he had to be one of the fastest guys in the league. And, and I'm talking about this is with and without the basketball. So, Muggsy, obviously, the heart of that guy to be five foot three and play in the NBA, um, can't tell you how big a heart he has and how competitive he was. I remember him basically taking me under his wing and just telling him, like, young fella, all I want you to do is run. Don't let me beat you down the court. You know, and he was serious. He said, I'll find you. Just run. 64-58, Charlotte on top. Boxing. Little fella, congratulations, man. Uh, we had some great times here at the Hornets. You've always been a leader, uh, both on the court and in the communities. Keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate everything you did and everything you taught me while I was in Charlotte. I wish I could have played my whole career with you, buddy. Congratulations. I'm so happy that this is your night. I love you, man. I've said my whole life, you're, you are a genius, and we're a genius on the basketball floor. All I can think about is the amazing memories that we shared uh, on the court uh, back in the early 90s. You know, and It's something that I'll treasure for a lifetime. You were not only uh, fun to coach, but fun to be around. And I've always said, you'll be another Larry Bird 
in the NBA before there's another Muggsy Bogues. You're the best. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight as we recognize a true Hornets legend. At this time, please direct your attention to center court where Charlotte Hornets managing partner, Curtis Polk is there, along with Charlotte Hornets president and vice chairman, Fred Whitfield, president of basketball operations and general manager, Mitch Kupchak, executive vice president and chief operating officer, Pete Gwilly, and executive vice president and chief administrative officer, James Jordan are at center court, where we welcome our special guests tonight in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our special guests in attendance tonight. Now please help us welcome the two players who played the most games with Muggsy Bogues during his career, Del Curry and Kenny Gaddison. And now, please help us welcome members of Muggsy's family, Muggsy's grandchildren, Tania and Samartine. His daughters, Taisha and Brittany, and his son, Ty, and wife, Kim. And now, Buzz City, get on your feet and greet the man of the hour. Selected in the 1988 NBA Expansion Draft, he remains the shortest player in league history. He's the Hornets' all-time leader in assists, steals, and minutes played. From your original Charlotte Hornets, a 5-3 god from Wake Forest, the one, the only one, Muxie Boone. There will never be another Muggsy Bogues. A 5'3 guard in the NBA with a personality and heart that was even larger than the Giants he took on every night on the court. Tonight, we are proud to acknowledge Muggsy's 30 years of contributions to our Hornets organization in the city of Charlotte. Muggsy came to the Hornets in the 1988 expansion draft, and even though he stopped playing here in 1997, he has never truly left Charlotte since then. This city embraced him, and he embraced it right back, making it his home and raising his family. After his playing career, Muggsy remained in Charlotte, turning his focus to nonprofit. His nonprofit, Always Believe, which he has spent the last 23 years helping kids reach their full potential as students and become well rounded, productive adults. It is my honor to present Muggsy with this key to Buzz City in recognition of his achievements both on and off the court during his time with the Hornets. I'm pleased to unveil this sale that will be displayed on the wall outside section 103 to commemorate Muggsy's place in Hornets history. Muggsy, on behalf of our Hornets organization and our amazing fans, thank you for all you've done for our franchise and the city of Charlotte. We love you. You know I had to adjust that. First and foremost, I just want to thank God for allowing this to happen for me to take place. Yeah. Yeah. 
as a little kid growing up in the city of Baltimore, all I just wanted to do was play basketball. Just wanted to play basketball, not knowing they would come with so much criticism. But I am so thankful to be here today. You know, I'm thankful for Fred. Thank you. Thank Michael. Thank the entire staff. Pete, you guys, for allowing this day to take place for me because this is a special moment for me. 30 years ago, you know, this moment happened. I, my family and myself came into the city and they, op open, they welcomed us with open arms. It's never been anything less than that. They supported me, my family, the community has been nothing but blessed and grateful for me, so I'm truly thankful for that. It started here. This is where I really grew as a young man and to an adult. I'm so thankful for my family. They're here to share this with me, my grandson and my three daughters, my two daughters and my son and my wife. Gomez. And I just, last but not least, these two gentlemen that are standing over here at GAT, as they mentioned that we play the most game with each other. I couldn't do it without you guys. You know, Dell, you and I have been here the longest. I mean, our family grew together. We grew together. And I wouldn't have done it with anyone besides yourself, buddy. So you know I love you guys. I love you daily. And I'm grateful that you guys allowed me to have this night. Thank you so much. Buzz City. Let's hear it once again for Hornets legend number one, Bugsy Bones. joined by Sam Purley, our co-worker for Hornets.com. And now, really briefly, I just want to touch on what you guys just saw. It was our halftime ceremony of last night's game during the Knicks, where we honored Hornets legend Muggsy Bogues. We gave him the key to Buzz City. We had a handful of people there. We also had Gaddison and Curry there, who played with him the longest out of any other players with him. It was really special, and it was really moving. I shed a couple, maybe five or six, <laughs> maybe 20 tears last night. What did you guys think? I thought it was a really cool moment uh, being around Muggsy the last couple of weeks where we've been doing some of the promotional stuff working up to the up to this night with him, it's, it's just been really cool to see how he's been embraced. I mean, this is a guy that obviously was known as being the shortest player in the NBA, but he was so much more than that. His heart, his sort of tenacity, his ferociousness. I mean, this guy just wanted to compete. He didn't care if he was seven feet tall, five foot three. He just wanted to go out there and compete, and I think that's what endeared him the most to Charlotte fans. And I think the cool thing was, as much as it got to you emotionally too, Aaron, and got to the fans, it also got to Muggsy. I mean, to see Muggsy shed tears himself out there on the court, that was a moving moment. There's no reason why anybody, there shouldn't have been a dry eye in the crowd. And then afterwards when he talked to the media and we spoke with him, he mentioned that those weren't his tears, those were his grandmother's tears. You know, and that kind of stuff right now, I mean, I get chills just thinking about it. Just to hear his sort of response and how much the night meant to him and his family and everyone, it was just a great moment. Really, really special night. And, you know, it's great that we're honoring this guy for the for last night because we're going right into another big mm -hmm. night tonight. Yep. You know, we have two huge games this weekend. I love seeing the fans coming out mm -hmm. here and tonight it's going to be huge. I can't mm -hmm. wait. We have the Lakers in town. Some guy named LeBron James yeah. joined the Lakers over the off season and you know, they're cut, they're sneaky good. Mm -hmm. They're sneaky good. You know, they started out a little with a little rough patch, you mm -hmm. know, like getting to know a new team and everything. LeBron's now in the West. What's your take on this? Yosemite Sam with the hot takes. We, got, <laughs> we, we need to hear some from some hot takes from Sam on this. Uh, it's like you said, they started off, I think they were 2-5, and 3-5 five, and mm -hmm. five to start off with. They've won 15 of the last 21. They're playing a lot better. I mean, it's starting to, learning to play with LeBron James takes a while because he's so, you build teams around him. You don't, you know, build with the guys first. You take LeBron and then build around him. So he's, you know, I think they're, um, they lost the other night in Houston, but I mean they're a very, very talented team. I think the hardest part about playing LeBron James' team is just his passing. I mean he can get to the lane. He's so strong, and if he doesn't have the shot, he his passing ability is so unique and so I think that's his best skill. I mean truthfully, when it's all said and done, he's they've got three-point shooters on the outside they can shoot. So Hornets are gonna have to have a 
challenge kind of containing him. I mean, he's, he's a handful. It's not just going to be one guy. It's going to be a team effort tonight. If you had to choose, would you put all of your guys on LeBron? Would you, what would be the game plan for you? If you were drawing up the game plan for tonight's game, where would you put our guys? I think it's going to be it's going to be defense by committee. It's going to be a LeBron, MKG, Nick. I mean, you can't have one guy guard him for all 40 minutes tonight. It's just not possible. It's going to be, it's going to take rotations. I think Marvin will probably start out on him, and MKG will come in maybe earlier off the bench. Might be the first guy. Um, and it, here's the thing: when you're playing a guy like that, he's going to get his. He's going to get his numbers. It's about stopping the Kyle Kuzmas, the Hearts, the Caldwell Popes, Lonzo Ball, making sure that guys around him aren't playing off of his abilities, and that's going to be the biggest key tonight. Kyle Kuzma, Hearts, Lonzo Ball. These are not names that mm -hmm. are usually we hear when Le on a LeBron James team. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got Dwayne Wade, he's got Kevin Love, he's got great players that usually play around him. How is this season a little different as he's playing with some of these younger guys? I mean, like you said, they're much younger. Kuzma's only a, Kuzma and Hart are only in their second year. Ball's in his second year, um, and it's it's different. You know, they just I think they're kind of playing a little bit towards the future in terms of saving money right now in order to get in position to sign one of these max guys in a couple summers so it's definitely different but you know I think playing at that age and playing with LeBron you can learn a lot quickly he's got a lot to give and a lot to earn and Kuzma's been playing great they don't have Brandon Ingram right now he's out with an ankle injury but mm -hmm. Kuzma's, been Kuzma's been averaging about 27 points since Ingram's been gone so he's obviously filled in really really nicely and they've got a lot of guys on one-year deals right now trying to get more contracts Lance Stevenson, Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley I mean everyone's in kind of a different situation but they're all you know, just trying to be successful, and LeBron is, is carrying this team like he has in Cleveland and Miami in past years. In a jam-packed Western Conference, when LeBron moved to LA, there were a lot mm -hmm. of people said this might be the first year LeBron doesn't make the playoffs. He might not make the playoffs with this team. I think we can kind of shake that one mm -hmm. off. I think they've got things figured out. Yeah, I was a little skeptical. I just wasn't sure if the talent around him was ready yet. I mean, there's a lot of pressure that comes with playing and a lot of pressure playing with a guy like that. He has high expectations, high standards for his teammates, and it's not always easy for a guy that is two years removed from college or one year as opposed to Dwayne Wade, who's been in the league ten years at the time. So, um, you know, they've done well. They've gotten it together, and they're very, very good. And I, th I think they will be in the playoffs at some point. Where they're going to be, who knows, whether they add a piece, who knows. But they're a very talented team. I think they're about 18 and 11 right mm -hmm. now. So it's obviously going to be a tough challenge tonight. But hopefully they can shake off last night's, the Hornets can shake off last night's loss to the Knicks and uh, get a big one tonight. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that. You know, not only did we honor Muggsy last night, we kind of have somebody that we need to call out tonight as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Matt? I mean, Stephanie <laughs> Reddy, uh, this is going to be her last broadcast of her Hornets slash Bobcats career, 15 seasons with the Hornets. Absolutely amazing. When I think about Stephanie Reddy, I think about I joined this team 14 years ago, so I kind of came in at the same time she did, and she was young in her career. I was kind of early in the stages, maybe middle of the stages of my career. But with a new team, she was always a familiar face, always somebody I could go to, always somebody who could help me out in terms of getting with the players, getting to know things about the players, because when I got here, I had no clue. At least she had been here for a while, mm -hmm. and she was always a great resource for me, and I'm very sad to see her go, but excited to see her join her next opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What yeah. about you? I mean, she's just, one thing that stands out to me is she's such a great basketball mind. I mean, she's coached, she played in college, she's analyzed the game, I mean, she's been in all different facets of it, and that's such a unique sort of background to have, and we've been lucky to have her for 10, 10 15 years, I don't know, mm -hmm. we, we know what the official time length is, but yeah. usually you lose people of that talented long time ago. The fact that she's been around here for so long, she's been such an asset to the organization, and so insightful, and, and, and just a real, uh, like I said, asset. That's the best way I can describe for this organization, and you know, wherever she goes, she's going to be an asset to the next place. Yeah, I'm really looking to seeing her flourish in her next journey. You know, for me, I came to the Bobcats when I was 22 years <laughs> old, and so now me being 30, looking back to see how much I've grown, and even under Stephanie, you know, when I came here, she not only, like you said, is a great basketball mind, but from a female perspective, she really showed me how to kind of, you know, make your mark in this organization and in this league, and, you know, she just was the pioneer for doing that and earning respect among her coworkers around her. And I think this is really a big, big step for her and me seeing her grow as she was teaching me as I was getting older. You know, it's, it's really, really special to see that she's moving on to a really great career ahead. Yeah, always a consummate professional. Stephanie already has been in her 15 years here mm -hmm. with the Charlotte Hornets and Charlotte Bobcats. I had a chance to sit down and talk with Stephanie as she prepares 
for her last broadcast tonight against the Los Angeles Lakers. We're going to check that out. I'm Matt Rachinski for Sam Perley and Aaron Pitsenberger on Hornets.com. This is Matt Rachinski for Hornets.com being joined by Stephanie Reddy for Fox Sports Southeast for the last time, Stephanie. For for me and you, uh, uh, we kind of go back. I've been here for 14 seasons now. This is your 15th season. Yeah. I remember coming in my last, my first year, seeing Adrian Branch and meeting Matt yes. Devlin and meeting you. Just, can you talk about full circle how this has all come and have you ever expected to be here for 15 years? Um, the short answer is no. I did not expect to be here for 15 years. I mean, when I started here, this was my first real television job. I had some television experience. I'd done some college games as an analyst, you know, smaller type of venues. Um, but this was my first NBA job that was on the side of the camera. And um, I was green, very, very green. I was learning every single day. And um, I wasn't very good. And I was grateful that there weren't a lot of people watching. <laughs> <laughs> Seven win season will help that one yeah. for sure. So it's it's been wonderful for me though. I mean, I've made so many friendships here and I have grown not just as a broadcaster professionally, but just as a person. I mean, people at home saw me pregnant with both of my kids. You know, I was on the air huge with both of them and I talk about James and Ivy all the time on the air and people who watch our games on Fox Sports Southeast have been extremely welcoming because it's like 82 times a year they welcome me in their home you know I'm in their living room I'm in their kitchen whatever they're doing I'm right there with them and and they're with me you know so when I see people at the grocery store or at the gas station they ask me sometimes how my kids are because they feel like they've known them because they remember when they were in the womb and so those are the sorts of things that no matter where I end up and and how many years go by once I leave here, those are the things that will stay with me forever. And you know, this is this is bittersweet for me because it's an extraordinary opportunity, but this is family. You know, this is this is 15 years. This is I don't know that I've done anything that long. You know, I haven't even been married that long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that you know you were welcomed into people's homes, mm -hmm. obviously because of the broadcast. But you mentioned family. Are you surprised how much of a bond you form with the people here at the Hornets and with Fox Sports Southeast? You know, I don't know. I guess I just didn't know what to expect coming from a team background. You know, playing and coaching for the years before I got into broadcasting, it was like a family because when you're a coach and, and you're a player, that locker room is like your second home. Um, so I didn't know that it, it would be this exact same. I was hoping that I would get some familiarity with people and, and develop great relationships. I, I didn't expect for it to be this close. You know, um, just I've gotten choked up more times than I can count just in the last week and a half, you know, since I first figured out what's going to happen next. Um, and it doesn't take much. I mean, <laughs> I'm an easy crier. I cry with TV commercials and, um, and I'm, but it's because I'm happy. You know, it's, I, I tweeted my heart is full and that's like the best way I can describe it because I feel so loved here. Um, and I have so much love for everyone here. Yeah. And shoot, here it comes. It's going to happen. It's okay. We're, we're professional. We power through this. This is what we this do. This is what we do. For you, though, there's been so many moments, good and bad. Yes, Obviously, Lord. we've been through them all. Yes. That's for sure. But is there certain moments that really stand out to you as, hey, these are the ones I'm really going to take with me? Wow. Um, you know, Steve Martin is involved in a lot of those. Um, when I first got here, it was expansion year, and as I said, I was very green. Um, Steve Martin was doing radio at the time, and I remember I was his partner on the radio sometimes as an analyst. So Steve Martin was my very first play-by-play -play for an NBA game. And he gave me so much confidence because he encouraged me to continue to pursue that path. Um, hosting in sideline was awesome, but because of my coaching background, the analysis comes natural to me because I feel like I can teach people at home and explain things. And Steve really encouraged me to keep pursuing that. So that's one thing. Um, and just, you know, our traveling crew, you know, it's like we're like a motley crew, um, a bunch of misfits, if you will, you know, but that's our thing, you know, like we all get along great. And, and I always know that there's someone that has my back no matter what. 
Um, and I also think, too, just the fans. That's been what surprised me the most. The closeness that I've developed with the, with the fans, you know, coming to the games, the season ticket holders, the fans that watch us on TV when we're on Fox Sports Southeast, um, and then the ones that do both. You know, like we'll have fans that come to the game and they'll come up to the pregame show and say, don't worry, I'm DVRing it. You know, like they don't miss a pregame show. Um, and that goes back to what I was saying. Like they have been so nice to welcome me in to their family. And so by extension, I feel like they're part of mine. We've also had a chance to work with some amazing players over the course yes. from Bobcats through Hornets, watching Kemba's Ascent. Yes. Is there players that will stick out to you? I mean, I'm sure you can't name them all, but certain players yeah. that really stick out to you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm like a, a parent where you're not supposed to have a favorite. <laughs> um, and I don't, for the record. I love James Me and I equally. <laughs> right. Um, but the players, you know, and you know this, you work with some more than others. And part of that is because of their ability on the court, right? The, the people at home want to hear from the star players. And so I've had to work with the star athletes that we've had here in Charlotte a little closer than some of the other guys who have kind of come and gone off the roster. Um, I'd say, you know, going back to expansion, Gerald Wallace was a favorite. Um, he was just so humble and so genuine. Um, Stack was a favorite of mine, and I think that surprises people. Steven Jackson's one of the best teammates you could ever ask for. Um, Al Jefferson was terrific. Uh, one of my favorite stories to tell is Ivy, my, my youngest. She is like talking about the players, and she just calls him Big Al. Just that's it. Yep. Like that's his first and last name, Big Al. <laughs> um, and of course, Kemba. I mean, he is like the dream of every kid in America. You know, you work hard, you're you're not expected to do anything beyond this level, and then you just blow the roof off. You know, I mean, he came here from Connecticut has, having proven that he could be a winner. Um, we knew that he was super fast and very skilled with the basketball, but his shot wasn't there, and we all knew that, and he knew it. But instead of just saying, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep getting to the basket, he worked on it. And I mean, he is now a prolific three-point shooter to the point where opposing coaches cannot stand to see him because they know they can't stop him. Um, and I've talked to almost all of them in the league, and they all say the same thing. He is a nightmare to defend. And having said all of that, he is still the same humble kid that he was when he came here from the University of Connecticut. And that's a credit to his mom. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing to watch how Kemba's grown. And yeah. watching him grow, breaking all these records, yeah. let's get the inside dirt from Stephanie here because she's got something that we don't have. She's on all these games calling games with Dell, the guy who's getting his records broken. <laughs> right. What was it like going through all this with Dell? And I know he's been a tremendous yes. impact on you as well. Yes, Dell has been amazing. Um, you know, with the whole Kemba thing, with all, all the records being broken, Dell has taken it like a good soldier. You know, he has, has been thrilled for Kimba because he also has seen him grow and mature into the star that he has become. Um, and I think Dell takes pleasure in it because he gets to witness it. You know, I think there's like, he's vested in Kimba too. So he was there obviously when he broke the records or created the records himself. But I think he has a certain sense of satisfaction in being able to be a part of his record being broken by calling those games. Um, and I've seen him, you know, he embraces Kemba, he cheers for him, he roots for him. And, you know, I've heard him say that, you know, it's gonna happen eventually, so I'm glad it's Kemba and I'm glad I get to be here for it. One last quick message you wanna send to any fans out there, you know, as you kind of, I know you're gonna do it on the broadcast, yeah. but just one last message to them. Thank you, you know, I mean, that's as simple as I can put it. Um, I have appreciated all of the support and encouragement that I've received from everyone over the years. It's been amazing, and um, I'm going to miss everybody. Well, we're going to miss you, too. It's been a pleasure and an honor working with you for 14 years. <laughs> I worked with Steve for 14 years, Stephanie for 14 years. This has just wow. been absolutely amazing and a great run to, that you've had, and we wish you nothing but the best. As you go forward, we know you're going to do absolutely amazing. Thank you. For Stephanie Reddy, I'm Matt Rochinski with Hornets.com.